And welcome to a bonus round for Straight Talk with congressional candidates in Southwest Washington's 3rd District, Joe Kent and Marie Glusenkamp-Perez. We ran out of time during our initial episode of Straight Talk this week to get some of the questions we'd like to ask answered, and the candidates agreed to answer a few more. So thanks again for, for being here for this bonus round. A lot of people talking about Social Security, that Congress needs to do something, because even the Social Security Administration on its website says by 2035, it's not going to be able yeah. to pay out full benefits, only about 70 to 75 percent of benefits if Congress doesn't act. And, and Joe, we talked about this a little bit when you were on in May. You talked about your idea for privatizing Social Security, like a 401k for younger people like Gen X, Gen Z, millennials. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you still think that's a good idea? I think it's something we should explore. I think it's definitely worth having a conversation about. If we bury our head in the sand, then it's going to go insolvent probably even faster than they, they, they guess. So right now what we can't do is continue to do more of the same old. What's driving the, the insolvability of Social Security is out of control omnibus spending. It's the fact that the government just takes our money and they spend it pretty much on everything else but benefiting the American people. So number one is good fiscal responsibility. What we can't do is what my opponent advocates for, which is putting an additional tax more taxes on people making less than $150,000. That's going to be that's, that's not going to true, make inflation Joe. much worse. That is said. not true. You said you we'll, wanted we'll, to raise we'll the hear what she yeah. says in just a minute, but you also said you would favor raising the eligibility age for retirement I think for the younger generation. That's something too to explore as well. I mean, folks are living longer, so let, let's take a look at, you know, when a good a good idea to actually go ahead and retire and start drawing social security yeah. is again we can't just stick our head in the sand and say everything's going to be fine and we also can't raise the FICA rate and put a tax on families making less than one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Let's see what Marie, Marie, Marie's, Marie's idea is. That's the opposite of what the FICA tax. So Joe's idea is that we you, you just heard him say he believes we're living longer so we should retire later but only certain kinds of people are living longer. People who work in white collar jobs are living longer. People who work in the trades, like me and my family, are not living longer. Why should we pay with our retirement for the retirements of, of people who work in office jobs? That, that's not equitable. And so, and you're right, I mean, Social Security is a crisis. They have not passed a bill on Social Security since before I was alive in Congress. And we're stuck talking about all these clickbait politics that don't so impact people's lives. An equity and test so what that? a FICA test uh, does, it ensures that, you know, right now people pay up to the first $147,000 they make. Uh, and then after that, they don't pay at all. If we remove that cap and people say, paid the same proportion of their income, regardless of how much they make, that would remove 90% of the solvency issues, and it would allow you to continue. To, if you put in more, you can draw more. This is a good solution. This is a a win-win. So, so that's, that's going to raise taxes on he, families making less no, than $150,000. The and then when they go to pull it out, it's, it's going to make it insolvent. It's right? going to make it insolvent. You do not understand It's going to make issue. it insolvent much faster when those people, because they've put more in, when they go to withdraw because they've put more in, it's going to make it insolvent two, three times as fast? You do not understand this issue. Well, uh, I think I completely understand this issue. You want to continue this reckless spending and continuing you know, to tax. The Democrats have proven they cannot be trusted when it comes to financial responsibility. And this is just yet okay, another Okay, let, let's go on to another subject. This is the first national election after the January 6th Capitol insurrection. You told our reporter, uh, Evan Watson, when he talked to you recently, that you believe it was a, an intelligence operation. What, what evidence do you have for that? I, I've said it needs to be fully investigated and fully adjudicated. I think there's parts of it, especially when you look at, you know, Ray Epps and some of these other folks who haven't been arrested, but they were clearly participating in leadership roles in criminal activity. There's a lot there that does look like an intelligence operation. I worked in intelligence. I know well, what, what do you mean by like. that? So Ray Epps, the guy that was telling people to go into the Capitol, that was removing barriers so that protesters But why would they do that? The I'm Capitol. not understanding why Exactly. Why wouldn't they do that? And why won't they answer when we have the director of the FBI on the floor of the House and the Senate? He refuses to answer whether or not Ray Epps was a federal agent or not. But he's the one that was encouraging other people to go into the Capitol. The list goes on. We can go on for quite a while. I mean, there was pipe bombs that were found there right before the actual January 6th event, right, at the RNC and at the DNC. The perimeter, they had the necessary troops to push out the perimeter. I used to work and I did tactical stuff for 20 years. They should have pushed the perimeter out. They decided not to. So why did these things happen? There's been a narrative around January 6th that's been weaponized against well over half the country. Anybody who voted for President Trump. We were told for months that, you know, crazed Trump supporters beat to death a police officer. Find out later that none of that actually happened. So we've been lied to consistently. So all I'm saying is Sorry, five, let's, re let's five relieve, police let's officers relieve died all, during those riots. Not during the riots. They died afterwards. That's been a narrative that's wow. been completely and totally wow. discredited. Okay, well, if I no, run, over, if I run you over with a car and you so don't die until the next day, is just lay it up. 
not culpable? We can't, we can't just continue to accept <laughs> the you, narrative. And you've called some of the defendants political prisoners. Well, what do you mean one, by that? Anyone who gets detained by our government and deprived of their right to a speedy trial and their right to defense, they, they are essentially but political do you, do prisoners. Do you support the people that rushed into the Capitol? First off, I condemn anyone who did anything violent. If anybody did anything violent, they should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. And what about That's those who rushed in to the try to who, subvert the, the, the folks democratic who, process? The folks who walked into the Capitol, when I was stationed in, in the D.C. area, I lived on Capitol Hill. There's protesters in the Capitol all the time. There's police officers who open the doors for the protesters. So the people that simply walked in and yeah, they're trespassing, fine, give them a fine and let's move on our way. But the people that were actually like hunted down like terrorists and put into confinement, they've been deprived of their constitutional rights. Well, let me see what and that shouldn't happen to take on, what, What's your take on January but These people were violent political rioters trying to subvert a democratic election, and we are entirely too sanguine about this. And prosecute the violence. <laughs> this, this is this is obscene. First, they try to steal the elections with violence, and and now they're trying to steal it by undermining the mail-in ballot system, uh, which you know, frankly, paper ballots are the gold standard in election security. Joe Kent wants to abolish them. No one in Washington to, State is to, calling for that. Where do you get this agenda from? I That's want us to, what I, I want us to know. vote in person so people can't receive two ballots like you. It's a completely that and totally. Is a lie. It's a completely and totally insecure. Until like two weeks ago, you were receiving your Oregon ballot that is at a your lie. Washington that address is a, and your Washington ballot. I have, it's a, I have it's never not, it's voted in fault. two states. It's a horrible system. No one said you voted, but you received ballots. These ballots get sent out there and there's no way to account for them. What's, yeah, what's wrong with us there voting is. in literally person, there is. voting in person yes, with an ID that proves you're to vote, And people get prosecuted for a felony when that happens, but it's vanishingly rare. I mean, election fraud is vanishingly rare. And, they, and no, your idea get, that we're going to take time off from work, we're going to stand in line Make all day. Make it a national holiday. Make it two national holidays. You know, the back idea, to back. the idea, and, and then that's not a bad idea, but it, it doesn't address this, this lie you're perpetuating about how elections are being stolen when you don't win. No, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that they're stolen. I'm saying we need to adjudicate them. Do, if, do you think the 2020 election I think, was I think stolen? In 2020, no, you have said that. Do I have think, totally said that, 100%. Do you, yeah. you, think it, you still think it was rigged? We need to adjudicate it. And if I'm wrong, why wouldn't you, did, why, you filed why a lawsuit? You, you why didn't join you a lawsuit. Point, why wouldn't you want to actually and, lay out all the evidence? Let me ask you about that. You did join a lawsuit in Washington course, State. absolutely. Um, that you said that the auditors had flipped some votes, but that got dismissed. No, 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 no. That all, 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 our, all, of the, all that our uh, lawsuit asked for was a full forensic audit. Well, we, sim got, we simply requested to see where our ballots were. And the were. judge dismissed it, and saying judge it was identical it. to many other lawsuits across right, right this, at, right after, the country right after that were we, the, Right after we, the people, said, can we see our ballots, the Democrats parachuted in Perkins Coie to represent them. Everyone knows who Perkins Coie is. Perkins Coie is a Democrat operative law, uh, law firm that charges probably about 1200 bucks per but hour. You said, you've also said you think Lauren Culp actually won the, the governor's election against was, Jay was, Inslee. Do you I was really believe that? Is I that a joke? Joking, right. I was joking Because he was beaten by... Joking around. I was joking digits. around. But look, at the end of the day, that is a I weird won, thing I to joke won, about. That I is won, a deeply look, weird thing to joke about. We both won in August. I won in August. I beat Jamie Herr Butler by a very narrow margin. I would be more than happy if we go over to the auditor's office right now and we fully audit the August election. Will you I'm stand totally by okay this, this election win or lose? Oh yeah, 100%, I've already said that. But you know what I'll always push for is an audit. Why can't we audit it? With the, with the election of 2020, the margin of victory in key battleground states is less than 12,000 in several keep... places. So why wouldn't we respect the people enough? Because right now you have probably 75% of Republicans, you have 45% of independents that say they don't trust our election system. Why wouldn't we, the people, just say, hey, we, we respect what you're saying. Let's lay out all the evidence as opposed to saying you're not allowed to ask Marie, that question. You well, when, when they keep moving the goalposts, right? We present evidence. We do an audit. We, we do uh, surveys and we find that there is no fraud. It's but then you done. just but and then they're, they're basically saying prove Sasquatch doesn't exist. You know, they keep moving the goalposts and you can't you, you know, it's politically driven, no, and it's real corroding evidence. There's our real democracy. Evidence. There's real evidence that hasn't been fully But, but they don't. But then present it. Supposed, then present it. That's what was supposed to take place on January 6th. Your case 6. goes before the court, and they dismiss it because it's baseless. They won't, and then you they say, won't oh, they were the cases. Your case was reviewed, and it was found baseless.
Right, they now, wouldn't let it. Let, 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 let me ask you a, a little yeah. bit more about vote by mail because Republican sure. secretaries of state in Washington have said it's safe and secure. It's very popular in Washington. Most people want to keep vote by mail, but do you want to see it abolished? I do. I want us to go back to voting in person <sighs> with an ID at a precinct where the precinct rosters are scrubbed. The ID indicates if you're an eligible voter. And then we don't even use machines. We count the ballots with observers from every single side. And if there's discrepancies, we adjudicate them right there. It's a transparent process. Okay, one more topic before we get to just a few fun questions about of Second Amendment guns. You both support the Second Amendment. Um, Marie, you've said that you would support some common ground, trying to find common ground to try to reduce gun violence, that it, you know, we're seeing record gun violence in Portland again and many other cities. What are, what are you supporting to some common sense measures you think would help? Well, you know, I think that when we look around, we see that kids are not as old as they used to be, you know, that um, there's just a lack of whatever. Whatever the cause is, one of the solutions that we can do to address uh, rising violence is to pa increase the age at which young people can purchase what are known as assault weapons from 18, what it's currently, to 21. And that's that's the that's a extent con, of yes. what you would yes. do. What what do you so think? Marie, Any safety so, measures so you support? So Marie thinks that you're good enough to go serve your country with a weapon, go fight and die overseas. But when you come back, if you're not old enough to buy a beer, if you're not 21 years old, then you don't get to have the same assault rifles that she brags herself about having. This is the exact reason why we have the Second Amendment is to prevent government from becoming tyrannical. So we don't need any more laws on the books about guns. There's already far too many. What we need to do is enforce actual laws and order and we need to make sure that people have their Second Amendment not infringed whatsoever. It's one thing to say that you support the Second Amendment, but then you say, but I want restrictions on these people over here. Well, then who's next? Who's, who's, the, ne who's the next group that's in power? Is it, is it true? Would you, would, you, would you really, you really believe we should have machine guns? The Second Amendment as written shall not be infringed. I think that the American people should have the exact same weapons that our military has. The reason why we have a Second Amendment is to keep a tyrannical government off our back. Look at the post-COVID world. We would be like Canada or we'd be like Australia right now if we didn't have our Second Amendment. The only check that we have from our government having a complete and total monopoly on violence and on power is our Second Amendment. Let me ask you just a few questions mm -hmm. before we, we wrap up. Just some fun questions. What, what's the last book you read, Marie? Oh. Um I uh, read a book called How the World Really Works by this guy Vaclav Smil. Um, it's an energy policy book. And Joe, how about the last book you read? This book I read, uh, probably The Stakes by Michael Anton. And if you had uh, an out of town guest, what's, the, what's your favorite place to take your out of town guests? Um, I would probably take them to the Ape Caves. And how about you, Marie? Uh, well, this time of year, we like to uh, go down. There's, a, there's an old apple orchard that's like a, a park now and um, play baseball with the fallen apples. So it, that's what you do with out-of-town guests? Yeah. So it, I know you both are super busy campaigning, but if you ever have a free day, what, what do you like to do? What's your hobbies, Marie? Well, I mean, when you run a small business, like, <laughs> I mean, there's not, like, there's not like free time. But let's say you had a free day. Um, and I know you're a mom of a 15-month-old, yeah, but I just mean, dreaming. Yeah, if some you laundry, had a free day. I don't know. <laughs> do some laundry. Um, uh, uh, we we um, have trails on our property that we, we walk quite a bit. How about you, Joe? What, do you, what would you like to do in a free day? Well, I'd take my sons probably down to either Update Caves or out to uh, Molten Falls, just somewhere out in the woods. I mean, just to hang out with my kids. That's what they like to do, build forts and, and just have one-on-one -on -one time with me. Okay, tell me something that people don't know about you, something that would surprise voters to, to know about you. Hmm. Uh, I'm an Eagle Scout, so grew up in the woods here in the Pacific Northwest. That's where I got my love of country, my desire to go in the military. Um, I think really just the, between that and my parents, the foundational values for life. And what's something that would surprise people about you, Marie? Um, well, growing up, my dad was the pastor of a church. What, what church was he pastor of? It was a non-denominational, um, it was a Bible church. So um, it was a Spanish-speaking church and um, really proud of of the work that my family did there well and thank you both for yeah. participating in this bonus round yeah. here on straight talk and wish you both the best of luck in, in the election and the campaign and remember we remind everybody to vote on november 8th thanks again for listening to this bonus round of straight talk with the candidates from the third district in southwest washington joe kent and marie glusenkamp perez